Long time ago, here in this village called Flakamish, lived a family, and they had this little girl, and her name was Quackwayash. Oh, she was a bad little girl. Cry and wouldn't listen to mom and dad. Everybody in the village, you see her coming, and they say, Hide, here comes Quackwayash. Pretend you're not home. Oh, the parents felt bad. They didn't know what they were going to do. Little Quackwayash, she got to be about 11, 12 years old, and she was totally out of hand. She wouldn't help mom around the house. She wouldn't help dad outside. She was in, not nice to the elders. She was just always doing something that wasn't right. Mom and dad, they didn't know what to do, so they went and seen grandma and grandpa. They said, oh my, look how big Quackwayash has gotten. They said, that's what we're here for, grandpa. She won't listen to nobody. Rotten, mean little girl. Could you help us? He said, I told you the best time to teach them is when they're little. Don't come to me after you got her all ruined and think I'm going to do it, perform a miracle and make her a good little girl. It's too late. No, we're going to leave her here and you fix her. Mom and Dad got in their canoe and they pulled out down the river. Grandpa, he sat down and he talked to Grandma. He said, the only thing I can think of is to take her high in the mountain like we do the young men when they're going to become a man. Then maybe, maybe she can turn out to be a good girl. <clears throat> no, Quackwish, no, no, please don't take me in the mountain. I'll die if you take me up there. I'll run away if you guys try to do that. No, don't put me in the canoe. I don't want to go in the canoe. Grandpa and Grandma took her and they put her in the canoe, got their long poles, and they pulled their canoe up to her Komakwal Chan. They got up there as far as they could go by canoe. Grandpa got out and he carried a whole bunch of rocks and he made a big circle and in beneath the old growth trees. He told Quackwayash, he said, you sit in that circle. I put water, roots, and different dried foods for you. I'm going to come back in five days, and you stay here. Don't wander away. If you wander away, I can't be responsible what's going to happen to you. She said, please, Grandpa, don't leave me. Please, she begged him. Grandma, please don't leave me or I'll die. They got in their canoe and they pulled away. She cried and she screamed and she cried all night long. It rained, he clumped, just come down. All this come across the sky and hear the thunder from up in the valleys. Oh, Quackwayash was scared. She cried and she squealed and she cried all night long. Pretty soon in the dark she heard, Samach, Samach, little girl, be quiet now. We're trying to rest. What is wrong with you? She said, my name is Quackwayash. She said, I'm naughty and I'm spoiled and I'm rotten and they left me here to die. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm cold and Shlomoch is coming down. I'm getting all wet and I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, pay attention, little girl. Pay attention. Broke daylight and she looked over to where the voice was coming from and there was a piece of bark ripped loose from the tree and it was blown in the wind. She walked over and she looked where that voice was coming from. She grabbed that bark and she leaned back and she pulled it and went and it come off way up the tree. And when it broke off, she ran with it back toward her circle. <clears throat> she got back in her circle. She sat down. She said, why did this bark talk to me? It's not solving, no problem. I'll fix it. And she grabbed it and she started ripping it in half. And it started separating outside bark from the inside bark. She sat there and she separated the whole thing. She got through and she took and she laid it all out and she broke it in half. She leaned over and she pulled it all apart in little strips, taking piece by piece. When she got through, she laid down her lap and she started weaving it. She wove the bark together and she got through. She had a big piece about four feet by four feet. Oh, wow. She took and she put it around her. Shoyim was blowing the northeastern. When she put this around her, it cut the wind. Chlomach was coming down. When the rain would land on her, it would run off like a duck's back. <gasps> ah, this is good. You know, call it a shwakwalt. I'll call this a blanket because it keeps me dry and it keeps the wind off me. So she was sitting there with her little shwakwalt on. Yeah, prison. Quack. Oh, should I get hungry? 
She didn't want to eat those. It's funny stuff that her grandpa left. I'll go in the woods a little ways and I'll get berries, she thought. Boy, she went and she got some berries and she'd come back. She was sitting there eating her hana, her, having a good time with her smoked fish, eating her salmon berries, and drinking her water. Person started getting dark and she started crying again. She cried and she cried. Oh, she was just boiling. Just before daylight, she heard something, Samach! Samach! Now what's wrong with you? She said, I'm scared and I'm hungry and I don't know what's going to do. I'm going to die up here and I don't know why they left me here. I'm stupid and I'm dumb and nobody wants me. I said, pay attention, little girl. Pay attention. Oh, she's feeling bad. Broke daylight. She went over where that voice was coming from. She looked up where she pulled that bark off the tree. It was sticking out and underneath it was real dry. She said, ah, ah, she so she grabbed some bark and she pulled it off the tree. She separated it. She sat down in her circle and she started weaving it. When she got a little piece about this big, about eight by eight, she pulled the center real hard and it went up to a point. <gasps> ah. So she had a little point of weaving and she kept going round and round. Kept going round and round and round and round. First it got real big and she put it on her head. Flummock come down and it ran off. Land on her cape and run off on the ground. Ah, this is good. So I'll call us a Yashakwin. Keep the, keep the rain off my head and the snow and the hail. This is good. So she was sitting there and looking around and she was eating her smoked salmon. Eating away. The person there was no more. She ate all of her berries. No more berries. She didn't know what to do. She eat all of her roots. She was sitting there and it was really cold and the wind was blowing and blowing. Oh my. Now what am I going to do? So she got up and she left her circle and she started walking in the woods looking for roots. She was eating roots and she'd find some more sprouts and she'd eat sprouts. She kept going along but she went back to her circle. She lost. She couldn't find her way back. Oh no. Now what did I do? She started going in circles trying to find where she left. She was surely was lost. She didn't know what she was going to do. She was walking along, person started to get dark. She sat down and her skin was hurting. She was hungry. She didn't know what to do. She had a big arm load of sprouts and her arms were getting tired carrying it. She sat down and she put her cape over her food and put her yasha quin down. There she sat, slumber. Coming down, it's Troy and blowing. Oh, I'm surely gonna perish. I'm lost, nobody will ever find me. She cried and she cried and she cried. Prison just for the election. Samoch! Samoch! What's wrong with you? She said, My name is Quackwash. <clears throat> I left my circle. I'm lost. Nobody wants me. And I'm dying. My arms are hurting. My back is hurting. My new cape that I made is. Scratching my skin. I said, pay attention, little girl, pay attention. Broke daylight and she looked and here was this little bird making a nest. And that's where the voice was coming from. She went over and she looked and she watched this little bird weaving. She, said, ah. she went over to the cedar tree and she pulled off the bark. She separated and she sat down and she started making a nest. She kept going, she made her nest about Two and a half feet tall. She made it about a foot and a half across. She was going on. She finished it and she finished off the end like the bird showed her. Ah, she said, this is good. Boy, this is really nice. She put all of her roots and stuff in her. Boy, this is nice. I'll take this home. This is a good basket. Wow. Boy, she went carrying, gathering food, looking for her circle. She looked and looked and looked and looked. Couldn't find nothing. She come to a swamp. She's looking around that swamp. Getting dark. She started crying, crying. Oh, now what's wrong? She said, my name is Quackwash and I'm lost. I'm stupid and I'm dumb. Nobody wants me. I'm lost and I'm starving. My blanket is hurting my skin. I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, pay attention, little girl. Pay attention. It broke daylight and she looked and the voice was coming from the cattails. And as she was watching, the cotton was coming out of the cattails and was blowing in the wind.
She said, oh. She went over her basket and she started collecting all that cotton. She got all that cotton of the cattails. She went over, she sat down and she remembered when that bird was making the nest, it was taking its own little feathers and weaving it in to the inside. So she took that cotton out of her basket and she started laying it down and took her blanket and she laid it. And she started weaving that cotton into that blanket. When she got through, she put it around her. Ah, she said, this is really good. It's warm and it don't scratch my skin no more. Oh, this is wonderful. So away she went walking along the edge of the swamp. Just about the time it started getting dark, she come into a stinger little patch. Oh, my. Stung her legs all up. She got a stick and she said, you ugly, stupid, dumb. She's knocking down all the nettles. Well, I'll show you for stinging me up, you ugly thing. I'm hungry and I'm lost. And here you are stinging me. She knocked them all down and she sat down on the ground. She grabbed them, pulled all their skin off. I'll teach you ugly things. She skinned them. She was sitting there and it was starting to get darker and darker and she started rolling. Spinning, she thought, I'll tie you guys little spirits in a knot. So she started spinning like that and she grabbed another and put it in and she spin. Pretty soon she got through and she had a great big ball on Real nice string. Oh, wow. She was sitting there in prison and broke, got dark. Just before daylight, she was crying real hard. What's the matter, little girl? Why are you crying so loud? She said, I'm lost. I'm hungry. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm, I'll never find my way home. She said, pay attention, little girl, pay attention. Broke daylight, and she looked, and here's this big spider, and he was making a web. She watched. She said, why are you showing me this? He said, pay attention, little girl. He that spider made a web. The spider went off the side of his web and he was hiding. Zzz, plop, big old bug land on it. Spider ran out and she said, oh, yuck, 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 why are you showing me that? Oh, gross, yuck, I would never eat a bug. Why would you want me to make that yuck? He said, pay attention, little girl. Prison, he went and ate again. There's another big bug on plop. He ran out and he caught it. Took it out and he ate it and she said, oh, gross. And she sat down and she took her ball of string and she made one. She started making a web. She kept going, weaving it around, copying. She'd look at that spider web and she'd make it just like it. When she got through, she had a great big one, about eight feet across, circle. She said, oh, I'm not going to catch no bugs. And she threw it in her basket. She started walking along carrying her basket and she was crying. And nighttime is now what's wrong? So my basket is so heavy. I'm lost and I'm starving. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, pay attention, little girl. Pay attention. Just when it broke daylight, she looked down on the ground where the voice was coming from. There was little ants going by and they're packing a great big load on their back. That's where the voice was coming from. She watched along again. Another ant come along. Gee, one after another carrying big loads on their back. Ah. She went over cedar tree and she pulled some bark. She got down and she sat down and started weaving and she made it about this wide. She made it about four feet long. She hooked it on the edge of her basket, took off her yashiklin. She put the basket on her back and she put that little strap on her forehead and she put her yashiklin back on. Oh, much better. Now she can carry her basket back here like the ants. And then she got both hands free and she can work good. Way she went going through the woods. Oh, this is good. And she was gathering food and putting it in her basket. Going along prison, she come to the river and she, ah, Stalo, hi, I can find my way home. All I have to do is follow the river downstream and I'll find my house. She started walking down the river bank and her stomach was just clackless. Oh, she was hungry. Ah, she said, if I could only have something to eat. She looked in the river and she was swimming by. She, oh, oh, and she starts slobbering it. Oh, mm, if I could only catch one of those channel. Oh, oh, I wish I could catch one. You know, when I'm by and she was just feeling bad that she didn't have no way of catching it. No father there to spirit for her. She got to thinking about that spider and she, oh, she, she took out her web. She was standing there watching another channel come swimming. She throwed it in the water and it shadowy tangled all up and she pulled him out. And she got a stick. 
She put him on there. She rubbed some sticks together and she made fire and she cooked him. Oh, it was good. She said, oh my, this is good. I'm going to call this a net and I'll bring it home and give it to my father. She put it in her basket and away she went. She was going along gathering all of her gifts that she was traveling and the knowledge that things were given to her. Pretty soon she come around the corner and said, I recognize this place. This, this is close to my home. Sure enough, she come around the corner and she could see her village. Oh, her heart was so glad she'd been gone for such a long, long time. It'd be so good to see mom and dad and grandpa and grandma. She come walking around and little kids were playing down by the river. They said, monster, monster. They run and got their mom and dad. They said, a monster coming down the river. Great big pointed head in a really big round. It's got a big hump on its back. Gee, oh my, what are we going to do? Did they come down, they had their spears, and they was going to spear it when it got close. The men got their bows, and they were going to shoot it. Just when they got the arrows pulled back, and they was going to shoot her, the mother said, no, no, that's quackwash. Don't shoot. That's my daughter. This can't be. That's a monster. No, that's quackwash. Quackwash has come back to us. Quackwash come walk along. She greeted all the people. She was growing up really big by this time. She really turned out to be a nice looking young woman. She took off her Yashikwin. She says, Grandpa, this is the Yashikwin. It's a hat. I made it. I learned how to make it from the tree. It showed me that if you put this on, you'll stay dry when Shlamach is coming down. When the sun comes out, you have your Yashikwin on and the skin won't fall off your nose. When it snows, when it hails and stuff, it'll protect your head. This is real good. I learned from the tree. I made it for you. Oh, thank you. And he took his yashik one. She took off her basket. She took out the web. She said, my dad, you don't have to stand on the rocks no more with your spear and wait for hours for fish to come by. <clears throat> with this, I learned from the spider to catch his bug. You can put it in the water and it'll catch the fish, the shanoch. And I call it net. I give this to your father as your gift. <gasps> ah, Heichka, Lanny. He accepted his net. She took all the different forms of root, the licorice root for the bad cough for the old person that was sick. She took out the root of the devil club for the old man who had arthritis. So you boil this and drink it, it'll heal your arthritis. She took all her different roots for the different people who were sick and give it to them. So I learned this from the different things that were teaching me in the mountain. She took off her basket and she gave it to her mother. She said, Mom, you put this on. I learned this from the bird, how to make his nest. I learned how to make the strap from the little ant. You put this on your back, hook it on your head, and you can go out and pick berries, put it in your basket, and you have both hands free. You can go and gather wood and carry lots on your back. You can carry a big load in there. I give this to you. She took off her walk out and she went over to her grandma and she wrapped her on her. So your old bones won't get cold no more. When Shlamuk comes down, you'll stay dry. When Shtrayam blows, it'll keep you warm. If you want to hide, get inside. Whatever it is you want to do, just take care of you. It come from the tree. It showed me how to make itself. She got through and she stand in front of her people and she gave out all the gifts that we use today. And the moral of this story is, and no matter how rotten, how rotten the person is, and how much we don't like them or dislike them, the moral of this story is that these people, if you treat them good, can go into the mountain. When they go into the mountain, they might come back with these real good gifts if they pay attention to what's around them. So always pay attention to see him. Oh.